Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use some custom CSS to take a newsletter block and have it float between two different sections in your Squarespace 7.1 website. Now before we get started, a couple things to note. The first, this tutorial is for the latest version of Squarespace, known as 7.1. If you're using an older site like a Bedford or a Brine theme template, I have a different tutorial for you. A link is in the description beneath the video. But if you're on the latest version, you're in the right place. The other thing I'd like to mention is that this code is super customizable. I'm going to show you some examples of how I can change things like the background color or add a border, add a shadow, but I want to encourage you to get really creative. Definitely put your own spin on this to make sure it really matches the style and the look and the feel of the website that you're working on right now. I'd also like to mention that you can adjust the values to change some of the sizing for different elements, but I'll walk you through that when we get into the code. So let's go ahead and hop into my demo site and get started. Alrighty, here we are in my demo site. I'm gonna go ahead and select edit on the top left hand side here because I wanna show you, we have two different sections. This first section is an image with some text, then we have the newsletter block, and in the same section I've got some more text down here. We can add more sections if you want, but I just wanna let you know this newsletter is in the second section, and that's important because the code we're gonna use is gonna pull this up so it hovers between the top and the second section, okay? All right, I'm gonna select done, and we're gonna navigate to design, and then down to custom CSS at the bottom. All right, so here we are in the custom CSS section, and the first part of this code is we need to identify what we're moving, which is the newsletter block. So I'm gonna say newsletter block, and then open up a bracket. So what we need to do is scoot this up the page, so I'm gonna add a negative margin. I'm gonna say margin top negative 20%, and you'll see my newsletter has scooted right up the page. Now, why did I use 20%? Because Squarespace is a responsive builder and 20% is gonna make sure it's 20% relative to whatever device view we're on. So you'll notice here on the desktop view, our title and our text is already over that image. Here on mobile, it's a little bit lower because 20% means something different on that screen size. You can use view height, you can use view width, you can even use a very specific pixel amount if you'd like. I personally prefer percentage, but there are plenty of different ways you can code this, so get creative and change what you want to about this, all right? Now I'm gonna add a semicolon because you'll notice the text and everything associated with that newsletter block, it doesn't have a background. It's not gonna stand out against my image. So after that semicolon, I'm gonna say background color and we'll just make it a solid white. So there we go. Now the title is a little bit close to the edge of that newsletter block, so I'm gonna give it some padding as well. I'm gonna say padding top, we'll just go for two REM, and uh, you'll notice I typed that in, nothing happened. I'm gonna add exclamation point important to that. That exclamation point important forces the browser to pay attention to my code and not anything else it sees. So let's recap before we keep going, okay? We've said newsletter block, that's the name of our element, We've said pull it up over the other page, margin, or sorry, the other section, margin top, negative 20%. Then we said give it a background color, background color, just solid white right here. And then we've said padding top to REM. That's two of the base font size. So when my font resizes, that padding will also resize. So everything will stay in proportion with each other. Okay, following so far. Awesome, let's keep going. I'm gonna give it a little bit more margin on the bottom down here, just to uh, make sure there's a bigger separation between the newsletter and the text, and then we'll add a border and a shadow as well, okay? So I'll say margin, bottom, let's go for three REM, and again, got that scooted down. Let's go ahead and make that two. I don't wanna give it too much room there. There we go. All right, and let's play around with the box shadow, shall we? I'll add a semicolon before that final bracket so we can add the line box, shadow, and we'll say five horizontal offset, five vertical, let's give it a spread of 20. And there we go, now we've got our shadow. We can change the color of that shadow if we want as well. I'll type in my favorite teal code there, um, otherwise it'll just default to a black shadow. Um, you can add a hex color code, RGB color code, whatever color you want that shadow to be right there. And now my newsletter block is kind of popping off the page. Uh, let's give it a border too. I'll add another semicolon and say border. Let's go 2px solid green. We'll give it a solid green border. There we go, and that also is gonna help it stand out a little bit. You can add all kinds of things to customize this. In fact, let's do one more. Let's add a border radius of, let's say 35px. Pull in those corners a little bit. So, 
definitely go crazy with the customizations here. You can add borders, you can add shadows, little border radius to curve those edges and make it a little softer. But the main part of the code, the most important part of this tutorial is definitely moving it up the page with margin top, negative 20%. Adding a background color to it because newsletter blocks don't have a background color. So if you want to stand out, you have to give it its own background color. And then changing the padding and margin for the top and bottom so it sizes in a way that looks good with the rest of the content on your site. All right, that's it for this tutorial. All of the codes I used today are listed in the description beneath the video. Definitely pay attention to those different values for the padding and margin and play around with some of those codes for the box shadow or the border. Get really creative with it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something awesome. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you like this tutorial, you'll love my CSS cheat sheet. With over 30 pages of pro tips and code snippets specific for Squarespace, you can customize your site way beyond your design menu. Download your copy today at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.